Julius, me, Aaron, Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, I have no idea. Sorry. Yeah. Oh my god. I was wondering Yeah, I know. I'm going to hit him. Um, yeah. We're going to say each other. Yeah. Wait, can we all do it like that? That's how much, right? I didn't say that. Yeah, that's right. So, we're here to talk about Edmund Wells, the bass clarinet quartet. Woo! <laughs> Uh, group that John and I were in for, I don't know, a while. Seven years? Something like that? Yeah, maybe not quite that long. Um, it was 06 to 13. Anyway. Did you say 10 years? 06, oh, I said 7 years. Oh, yeah, 7 years. Okay. Um, Step in with the Started by uh, Cornelius Boots, uh, who just had this idea that bass clarinets could and should play heavy metal music. Um, and he was right. <laughs> uh, and he sort of, you know, a brief history of the group is he started it in Chicago by himself, like overdubbing, actually started when he was a student at IU, just overdubbing bass clarinet parts. On cassette tape? On cassette tape, back when cassette tape was the <laughs> technology of the day. He moved to Chicago and he tried to start, uh, find people to do it. And then he moved to Oregon and tried to find people to do it. And then he moved to the Bay Area and tried to find people to do it. And he went through like, Bass clarinetists uh, until he arrived at the version with me, John, and this uh, Aaron Novick, who wrote Strict Nine that John and I played on our concert. And yeah, most of it is original compositions. By the time we were in the group, we would do some covers, but most of it was Cornelius's um, original compositions. And he is really fascinated with sort of um, what does it mean to be a wind instrument that doesn't have to be. <laughs> uh, because um, there's a certain style in, like most styles of music, the bass line can be continuous without any interruption. Um, and classical music, you know, that often, or wind playing especially, um, when you have to breathe, it breaks the line. You sort of lose a lot of the drive and forward momentum uh, once you have to breathe. So he was sort of like, because he could circular breathe and he was interested in it. It's not, it's not just circular breathing though, it's circular breathing with the certain intensity of like sound production combined. Um, and so that was kind of like the philosophy behind it. Then if you add in like slap tonguing, if you add a drum set, if you add in throat harmonics, you add a distorted guitar. And so you can sort of recreate a lot of different genres just on the bass clarinet through that. And then, yeah, so in Cornelius's background, you know, he, he had like a full, you know, classical clarinet training, but he also plays, he also played the saxes, he played Barry sax, he played in funk bands, he had some jazz background. He also, around, the, I think, starting before Evan Wells, overlapping with it somewhat, he had this sort of heavy metal band called Magnesium, where he played what he called robot bass clarinet, where it was this bass clarinet with this mic. In it, and he would do like these really heavy bass lines. I think there's also guitar and drums in that group. And some of the early Edmund Wells tunes are actually arrangements of magnesium tunes. So in other words, Cornelius had like the background to pull this off in a way. Like he right. really, he, he generally was immersed in all these genres that he's that he's drawing on in this, which I think is what gives it a lot of its kind of strength and power. Yeah. What's the basis of the name? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, do you want to do? Edmund Wells is a you know, there are several other, many bands that have a fake person's name. Like Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd or Jethro Tull. Like, oh, okay, you know, sure. Yeah. And Edmund, it comes from a Monty Python sketch. Yeah. Where there's someone, someone's like going to a bookstore looking for books by Edmund Wells. Yeah. Um, okay, but they keep like getting the wrong title. It's like, uh, I can't remember. Like, they're almost oh, like, oh, yeah. I should, okay, yeah. it's one of those. Okay, um, fair enough. Anyway. Um, and the other thing I was going to say is that, um, the, the reason why it's a quartet is Cornelius actually said, at least, that he had sort of very specifically, it was like, it's bass, guitar, drums, and vocals, and those yeah. are the roles of the players. I don't think that's actually completely consistent, like sometimes everybody's kind of doing the drum yeah. part, um, but that's how he was thinking of it. And often, when you're playing it, you're on one of those basic roles. Yeah. Uh, Cornelius, uh, late, like the end of Edmund Wells was Cornelius sort of got frustrated with booking Gates <laughs> and yeah. uh, had picked up Shakuhachi Flute as a sort of attempt.
attempt to find something even more esoteric and challenging than the bass clarinet. Shankar <laughs> um, is like famously like the hardest instrument to play, and so he then sort of abandoned the bass clarinet and started continued to Plus play. Plus 10 years, really. Yeah, and played himself. 10 years, like low shakuhachi. And then of course, since it's him, he's like writing low shakuhachi heavy metal quartets. <laughs> but he's, he's done all the like traditional shakuhachi training and has yeah. whatever certification. It's like Grandmaster. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he's, he's gone. He like, when he gets, when he gets into something, yeah. he like goes full throttle. Yeah. Um, and he also, you know, I think he's, his music has also always been driven by a very kind of um, sort of spiritual drive. And I think that Evan Wells definitely was that for him. Um, and so, you know, it was, it was, I think it was unlike anything we'd experienced before. Because yeah. it was, you know, it's very different from a classical or new music gig where you like show up and you, and you play the part and, and the kind just like, oh, actually, it's mezzo forte in that bar. Yeah, but you show up and, and, you know, of course we like blasting away and but, like a lot of it we had to learn by ear effectively. Yeah. Um, you know, be like, nope, it goes like this. And then you try to copy and then we would get it. And not only just the rhythm, but just the sound. The style. You could play the so loud and intensely without any sort of like, any gaps in the sound that it was just like, okay, here we go, like how do I play yeah. louder? How do I play longer? How do I incorporate circular breathing more regularly? Like how do I incorporate all these things that I do a little bit in other repertoire, but just like turn everything all the way up all the time. Yeah. Um, and so you know, I often, you know, I never really studied bass clarinet. I don't have like any degrees in bass clarinet, but I, I often feel like my Evan Wells time was kind of my like bass clarinet DNA or yeah. apprenticeship yeah. kind of, cause you know, just having to keep up with Cornelius and figuring out how to do what he does was like, I, I think sort of a more profound education than I could have gotten in any other way. Yeah. Bass clarinet. Yeah. So you have some things to play, right? Yes. <clears throat> Why don't you introduce those? I think we'll have you guys play and you guys want to do like a concert, right? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. We're going to just run straight through these pieces. So, hello. We are Joey 809 and we're going to play three pieces for you. We're going to play Pascal Illumination. We're going to play the second movement of the multi, ah, the multi movement work that Cornelius wrote. It's called, the whole thing is called the Griffiths Three Books. And the movement that we're going to play is the second movement, the Black Lodge. And we're going to go straight from that into the postlude of that same suite, which is uh, AFL B short to slumber.
Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Great work. I mean, just a few days, too. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you tired yet? A little bit. <laughs> Fortunately, that last one should be slower. Very slow. Uh, So I think, um, like, the spirit is fully there. Yeah. Right. Yes. It's amazing. Like, just the commitment that you're putting to it, and like the sound that you're getting is like, it's it's awesome. Like, yeah. The fact that you've been rehearsing it like three times at 10 p.m. It's you know, it's it's really 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 excellent in that way. Um, well, I have a lot to say. Do you have a lot? No, to go ahead. Yeah. 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 Um, so I think. Uh, we can we can work on on any of them with all of them there's like a, a feel thing that i think would be like the most you know transitions blah 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 there's like intonation stuff i mean that last one especially though like the judge intonation stuff we were doing this morning there were like a few of those chords that really were in tune and it was like it suddenly filled the room but like most of them were not but again that's not something you get in like you know four hours of rehearsal i do like a long time on that um can we um, can we do the last the last movement? Um, who wants a break? <laughs> I play too much part. He just double. I'll just right. double. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I played this one. Oh, we'll get here. We'll just take that one. Well, I know we have to do that. Okay. Uh, let me just play this one. So I can start it. I'll double. So. <laughs> um, I'll just play it by myself for once. It's <clears throat> so it's an intensity of sound, and it's not not letting up at all. Good. Can we do the 
the groove in the um, the um, swamp groove. <laughs> Visceral, it is. it's just this wall of sound, you know, which is what you know when people go to a rock concert, that's what they want, right? They want just that visceral excitement. Um, yeah, they're sweating so hard, <laughs> they're sweating so hard. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm coming to French, we're gonna get no, right. yeah, yeah, um, yeah, great solo, by the way. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, the only thing I would say yeah. is stay out of the bottom octave because that's when you got lost, you're okay. in the same register as them, but once you're up. All the solos are really fun. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see. Anything else in this one? Or I had some thoughts about Pasadena too. Could we could we do one of the um where it gets faster, the kind of blues through I, I can't remember if I didn't say about that. Yeah. yeah, I mean if there were rehearsal plans, you guys could tune and connect those like perfectly together. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, go for it. Because maybe a little fast too. Is that your part? No, I played that too. Or is that for me what's the part? No, that was Carl's yeah. thing, yeah. yeah. Oh, do you want a solo? What's that? No solo or a solo? Uh, let's just do the group first. Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> Oh, it's swamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was too, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it does. My bad. I didn't see that. Oh, right. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah? Uh, can we pass it if you want to make sure? Yeah. I have one question. About yeah, absolutely. Uh, the boom, 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 boom. Was it? Oh, we should do that second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess that's a good point. Yeah. yeah.
water, the tone quality should still be melody. So it's not really. It's. There's like a roundness to the to the edge of it, even though it's loud. It's not. It's not a grip. It's not. Take like one second when everyone has a chance to make their picture. Are you, can you, can you, yeah, great. Right. 
also, just to, just to worry about the concept, I think let's, this is such a unique opportunity to play with as many bass clarinets. I really want us all to just really try to like save the piece. Try yeah. kind not of to be stressed about it, try not to be anxious, just like really be in that moment, feel that resonance around you. Yeah. Just like have a ball. Yeah. 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 Just have fun. It's all fun. Yeah. It's all, this is the fun part this year. You know, this is the celebration of all the amazing hard work that you've all been doing this week. And um, yeah, I mean I think it's just really remarkable to see how much change you've all done in a week, in five days, not even a week, you know, five days, it's been really so, like, such a pleasure and honor for us to, to work with you all, and to meet you all, and, and like, see you all do this kind of stuff, it's, um, yeah, it's been really special, so let's all Thank you, thank you, you guys. Sure. So yeah, let's all have a nice break, go relax, let's get some sunshine, and then we'll reconvene for just a celebration of the most bass clarinets that we can find. <laughs> Did you talk about leaving cases yeah. backstage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to just sit in the audience with our instruments. Okay. We're not going to get my cafe. Okay. I will buy okay. a joint type of cases. Yeah. 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 Yeah.